Hello everybody and welcome again to another washing machine motor. Alright, so let's get started. We're going to get a once in a lifetime opportunity to join the party too. No catch, no money, no skills required. <laughs> Alright folks, today in this episode I'm going to show you how to find with the multimeter the pinout of the washing machine motor, especially the universal motor. We have here the diagram. We have here the pin, like one, two, is a taco coil, as I showed you in detail in the previous video. The coils between this and this, and the last, you know, the brushes. And this is the way how to connect it. From one brush to one coil, the other coil to the mains, and the other brush to the mains. All right. Now, as you can see in this uh, washing machine, in most of the washing machine, there are this kind of motor, universal motor because it's running on AC and DC. To be able to find the pin out of the washing machine motor, we have to do it in two steps. First one is the visual inspection. As you can see here, we have the black thing left and right. These are the brushes. Moving along these red wires are Taho, and the rest could be the coils or whatever. All right, in order to do the continuity test on each and every pin, if you don't know how to do it, I have a video and it's going to be in the description below and in a card on the right side. Let's check each and every individual pin. All right, we're going to put the multimeter in the continuity test. And we're going to start from the brushes. First two pins are the brushes, so it should be always connected. Beep, beep, as you can see the beep, they are always connected. And let's check with the other pins. Nope, nope. Nope, it's got no other connection. So that means the brushes and just the brushes are connected to each other. All right, let's move on. This particular washing machine motor has got three pins for the coils. That means that it has a center tap. So that means that each and every pin are connected together. So like three, four and five are connected. Let's check three and four. Let's check four and five and 3 and 5. Yeah, all of them are connected. If we're going to do a resistance test, we're going to find out that the two on the left side pin and the right side pins are having the same resistance. And if we're going to put we're going to put the resistance meter into the ends of the connection, we're going to have a total of those two resistance together. All right, let's move along. It's got no continuity with none other pins, so just three of them together. The last two pins are the Taho coil, and this one should be alternately connected. As you can see now, I'm going to rotate the shaft. You see, it's like a small clock. Wherever I'm going to turn or how fast I'm going to turn the shaft is going to be or not the connection between these two pins. All right, so that proves us that the diagram here is good and there is no other connection between the coil, the taho or the brushes. Just each and every one are individually connected. As you, we can see here, there is no ground connection to each and every pin. So it's no connection, just the shaft is to a wire and then it's going to be to the third wire to the mains. Thanks all for watching. In the meanwhile, don't forget to subscribe, thumbs up this video and see you on the next one.